Hello and welcome to The Chain, our series where one episode links to another by some means, whether that be the director, the composer, an actor, a word in the title, it can and has been anything. Uh, last week we were having a look at Alan Silvestri's score from Forrest Gump, and this week, linking via actor Haley Joel Osment, uh, we are having a look at John Williams's fascinating score from AI Artificial Intelligence. Of course, a movie kind of made famous um, by the fact that Steven Spielberg took over from um, it being a, a Stanley Kubrick project. Um, but the score, for me, is really quite an interesting one. It, it's um, quite unusual music for um, Williams, and yet instantly recognisable. And you've got a real... Um, mix of flavours in there. It's a um, really great score. And it actually proved to be quite difficult to choose a cue to work on. So I actually prepared two templates just in case. It's sort of a one cue which I would definitely complete in the usual kind of two hour window. Um, and another which I definitely won't. But um, it's one that I would really like to have a look at. So I'm still debating, but we'll see. Um, now, um, if you are here, please do say hello in the live chat. And I just see that Jean-Pierre has popped in. Hello. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. And let's keep the live chat lively. Um, anybody knows who Kubrick planned? Well, I don't. But um, I do know that Kubrick did select that one piece of music um, that he particularly wanted to be included. And indeed, John Williams did weave that into um, the score. I forget uh, exactly which it is now, but it's that kind of Viennese waltz um, which is in there. Knowing Kubrick, he probably would have used um, classical um, cues and things like that more prevalently, perhaps. Um, now, I'm just having a quick look, it looks like my uh, background is a bit fuzzy, so let's see what I can do there. Um, where are we? Film tiles. Uh, try and adjust it without making my head disappear. It's always fun. That's a bit better, isn't it? Right, okay, so uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go with the long queue um, uh, because, because I can. Um, as with uh, some previous weeks, um, I've got a little bit of interview with John Williams, um, which I can play a bit later on, and that's going to be nice. Um, incidentally, if you missed the Apollo 13 episode and have noticed the fact that it's not available to re-watch um, on the channel, um, that was actually copyright blocked for the um, sections of video that we showed. Uh, and I can just remove those and it'll play again, but um, I might manually edit the video slightly uh, so that those aren't just sudden jumps in time. Um, but I will make that available again. ASAP. I've actually been away this week so I um, uh, haven't had a lot of time to catch up on stuff like that. Anyhow, um, let's get to it and the queue we're going to have a look at is 1M6 Hide and seek. Um, and let's just make it a little bit smaller so I can see the chat. Hi, Darian. Hi, Marcus, I want to say. ML. I'm probably remembering that wrong, and I shouldn't. Um, sorry. 
Right, so yes, here we go. We've got our template and we have um, a direction of liltingly. And I'll probably want to adjust that tempo because that's just a hangover from what I used as a template for this cue. Um, this cue orchestrated by John Neufeld. Um, we've also got cues in this score orchestrated by Conrad Pope. Um, probably some others that I am forgetting, but this particular one's John's. Um, Finally, yes, I've got my, my setup slightly different than normal, so I feel like I'm at an angle. <laughs> Let's move you. Sorry about this, get myself comfortable. Strap in, as I say. AI is quite a long score, yeah. In fact, the La La Land release of it was on three CDs, if I remember right. How do I choose my cues? Um, partly um, just uh, you know standout cues that I enjoy, or um, maybe they've got some particular point of interest. Sometimes it is literally um, maybe you know down to run length of the queue or complexity of what's going on. If I think I can complete that in two hours, then you know that's what I'll go with. Um, but this one, hide and seek, is uh, you can see it's like hundred odd bars long, which is twenty seven pages of score. I think we'll be lucky if we get through eight. Although there's some pretty light orchestration, so we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to get cracking, otherwise uh, we really will not get very far in it. Look like... <laughs> Thanks, yeah, it's a shot from uh, the movie as they're entering Rue Shitty. few things here, instruments that are hangovers from what I used as a template, so I might ditch those, some of them. I don't think we're going to need those. Um, let's get a synth. and it's a synth piano so there we go pretty light orchestration at the beginning here so um, that's the same <laughs> not too worried about collisions right now because um, obviously it's very busy here at the moment but it won't be when we start cutting things down. Um, Since so piano one, cello. Interestingly, there's a hairpin on here, which. Um, you can't do when you're pizzicatoing, but that's just to show a general direction that we're going to get louder across these individual notes, and then down again. We'll start the piano, and here we put in half the note value you actually want to show. So here. 
two dotted crotchets and then we do the tremolo between and it sets that right and because it's bowed we're on it slurred that's it one page down 26 to go yep it is um, funny amount uh, the Rue City scene where they're coming in is indeed where that classical piece comes in. Now, uh, here, I'm going to take that. Not quite that, but uh, what's that? A flat, maybe. Sounds right to me. Four of them. Up. Down. Just going to check back for it. Nothing there, just MP. Did I put in MP? Yes, I did. Sometimes feel schizophrenic doing this, you know, talking to myself. <laughs> um, since that. Uh, Hark's not actually marked there, so it might not be in. I think I might take that out actually. We'll have to listen for that, but that's not in the score. Um, in fact, that is marked solo. So. Um, ring MP. Ah. No, slight misread there, sorry. We want let's do uh Since the last, so Violins.
now a quick look and see. There was not a count of violins at the beginning of the queue, but I can tell you hopefully. Break down. 32 violins, 14 violas, 12 cellos, and 8 basses. So pretty. That'll be 16 and 16. Don't want that on there. Put it on page one. Sixteen. Sixteen. Fourteen. Twelve. Eight. Back to one and six. Bit better, isn't it? Right, and then we want that again. Let's do G two. Oh, that's fun. Um, That. Um, then we've got Ola's on a E. Name that tune. <laughs> um, Div Arco on the E. Home City. <laughs> Hiya, Shaman. Good to see you. Better late than never. Were you watching the football? So, a quick lesson to those gorgeous eight bars. Just go a touch faster than that, I think. Might even be a bit fast. Um, let's have a quick listen to the original recording. And I'll use my trusty app 
just tap the beats and see roughly what it should be. And of course, I should be putting it in uh, dotted crotchets. Um, so I probably wasn't far enough actually. <laughs> yeah, I normally feel that way, but if it's uh, an international, I'll sometimes stick it on in the background. It's quite fun actually. I got to, I was sitting here doing some work with it on the second screen, and my daughter was sat next to me. Nice bonding moment. Right, uh, we have uh, vibraphone and marimba. Uh, to solely with synth piano, both with soft mallets. Lots of information to take in there. Right, uh, so we want, let's put uh, vibes up first, I think. Remember there. Sorry. Right, uh, not piano one, synth piano one. Solely with percussion. Piano. That goes to that. Yeah, Ben, uh, your comment about Poker City, very, very similar. Um, I thought the same, actually, when I was having a listen through, but uh, found also found that quite um, appealing. Um, I often find that um, William's scores can be paired up, um, especially if he's working on two in close succession. Maybe it's that he has some kind of idea that he's trying to figure out or uh, see through to completion and uh, it spills over into both pictures and particularly around that time of prequel Star Wars trilogy and uh, the first three Harry Potters you can find a lot of uh, similarities in there and things like that. <laughs> yeah, baseball I've uh, never gotten into. So this is the solo here. Um, and uh, you might name P Magico. Um, pedal throughout, but I'll put the pedaling in later I think. Um, maybe I'll just put a quick 
thing there. Just a note to myself. Sort that later. Um, and then we'll go. Um, actually, that needs to be dotted. Continues to nothing. Niente. And this we had. Oops. Should really have a slur under that for two uh, voice two as well, but it's going to get quite messy, so I might hide that just for now at least. Um, continue that. Don't need two lots of rests. And let me put add in. Slightly nonsensical. Why is that not playing pits? So I'm not tell it to do pits. Oh, I didn't mean that. I meant pits. Then we've got. that just do a little bit more and then we'll play that back again LB.
what I quite like about this is how almost random it feels, not random, but uh, the, the liltingness and then this, when this solo comes in, it's quite unpredictable in its meter. I feel at least. No, that's not the work, is it? They're all dotted in the manuscript, which is obviously not uh, quite right. See what we've got there. Is that really a B, do we think? Maybe a splodgy C on the base. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh, I think we'll put that as a C. Uh, yeah, I think that's just a hurry you'd see. Have a listen to it on the audio a little bit. Right, bit of controversy now. So we're in 6-8 here, you could notate it that way, you could do it as um, a duplet with, uh, without the dots, that's how it, this is how it's shown in the manuscript, as uh, dotted quavers with the base, that's fine. I tend not to put markings in where it says that this is with base or something like that. Um, I guess that's helpful during a recording session, but sort of as um, study score information, it's kind of superfluous. I'm going to try to declutter as much as I can. that back because you can't tin through that. Gonna nick those again just to save a bit of time. When we repaginate this we won't need these reminders in the same place but it is quite useful actually sometimes to um, have them multiple times along the staff to just make sure they fall somewhere on, on a page once it's repaginated um, and then they can be moved. You just got to be careful not to leave random ones in that you don't need or want. Bonjour from Calais. Uh, good to see you drop in then Pete. Uh, nice to see you. Good. Piano comes back in there. No, it doesn't.
time. Again, pull that back because you can't diminuendo through a pizzicato. Um, just need that one. That's all they see the gray. Oh, right, uh, it's um, 1M6 hide and seek, Pete. Um, nice lilting cue. As you're uh, having a flying visit, uh, let's give you a quick blast. Unusual bit of controversy <laughs> and base there. Did they match up? They did. Hmm, interesting. Don't remember hearing that before. Now we bring in clarinets. Hmm. I always find that this movie um, kind of gets overlooked a bit, you know. I don't know whether it was all that well received. Great score as well, really great. Alright, got him. LV on there. And uh, 
Celeste comes back in. Gliss, which is uh, seven, so it's just an octave. Again, that's one of those where. Um, I would not put in that second note, I would uh, just put an LV on there. You can't hold a note on the harp, so uh, why tie it to another? Uh, accent on there, and then LV there, that's right. Islands. Um, still too busy from before. Um, accent to kick us off, and that's. Uh, Got a MP Well, that's how it's marked, but I think I would just put PP with an accent. I think that'd be all right. Don't really need. It's just seems a bit much. MPPP. Uh, nice work, Chris. Lots of detail. Thank you very much. Ooh. Hello, Peter Rudd. <laughs> How are you doing? So we go there. F sharp G. And so we go to <laughs> Cheers. Did you watch the end of the football, Pete? Ah, no, that's not in the right place. That's, that's better. Um, MP, PP, that's PP. actually a harmonic on that one. So, 
and if that will play back the harmonic if we just a circle, we'll see. And just solo the basses there. So it didn't play a harmonic. What I'm going to do then is um, add in the fifth above, fifth, fourth, fourth. Uh, no, what is that? That's a G. No, it's not a open string. So. Is that not playing back then? One, two, three, four. Interesting. Um, my harmonic's not playing back. I wonder if that's because it's on the bass voice and it's not used to you doing harmonics. Um, I'll put that on the circle like that. Maybe uh, highlight it for review at the end. Um, do that. Uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about spoilers. I didn't even think about that. Sorry. But yeah, good result. Ah, uh, oh, yes. Uh, the old for your consideration promo. It's got to love those. Right, now what I'm going to do is just put in a sempre pits, uh, always pizzicato, um, just as a reminder. And then let's have a quick playback of that and see what we've got. Good point actually. I didn't check to see if it's a transposing score or not. Um, so uh, let's see what's really have we got. Nothing to indicate. Now knowing John, it probably is a transposing score. Which means that, that Clarinet pitch of the upper tone. But what have we got there? Uh, yeah. So let's do that quickly. Transposing down. Um, oops. If that sounds horrendous, we know that it uh, shouldn't be. Can't really tell. 
Um, so I think we consult the original audio. Let's have a quick listen. Interesting. Did you notice? Um, sorry, just pausing that there. Was that? Where was that? No, that was fine. That was that bit there. Okay. It was a B in the bass. There's that funny bit of bass and bassoon that I never heard before. Never noticed that before. A transposing score. <laughs> Fun times. Yoink. To be fair, that's pretty par for the course for John Williams, so should have suspected that from the offset. Right, okie dokie. Um, a little bit of clarinet too. And that goes to. Niente. Yoink. Okay, it's there. And we get that. So, then we have a look, we've got a bit of synth piano, which, uh, let's put a uh, Celestian as another bar of that, with a diminuendo, and then that hands off to synth one. So that's going to double acoustic piano. in there as well. That's a piano. So we got harp two with cellos. So that's um, C. So that uh, compound time, 5-4, is really helping to drive that lilting feel. Uh, Pizza card over for that. And we want a Unis. Unis only. Suddenly piano because although don't know how suddenly it can be if you're diminuendoing into it. Um, that's the marking. Like that. 
that. And that's on E. And more quiet. What else have we got here? We've got for a number, for number, then a half bar of that, which is going to be C. Good. Looks a bit neater, doesn't it? Slightly. And just a quick this in there. So you can see it's pretty lightly orchestrated at this point. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put in. Oh, we're still playing. Sorry. Um, I'm going to put in the next page with the note sound turned off, and uh, whilst that's doing that, we can have a quick listen from the maestro himself. Let's clear that playlist and go into there. Let's just do a quick um, play that. That's on top, that's what we want. Stephen is very comfortable with the use of music in his films. AI, I think, has over two hour scores, but his particular kind of lyricism, his particular kind of emotional palette that he creates, seems to lend itself to music to the extent that we don't feel we're, taking out of, we're taken away from the state of reality or the reality that he's trying to conjure for us by the presence of the orchestra, which can happen with another kind of film. So the music, I think, is quite schizophrenic, at least in my mind, because you have very tonal aspects, some string in the beginning. You have the piano at the end. And there are sections that are very atonal, which is to say dissonant or without the gravity of the tonal system to root it. Some sort of postmodern things for this flying of the helicopter, a lot of use of electronics, much more than I usually do. Be careful, Dave. This is not a toy. Also, you have a snippet of Tchaikovsky. And a bit of Rosen Cavalier, you even hear when they go into Rue City, which incidentally, this quotation of Richard Strauss was the one piece of music that Stanley Kubrick requested that Stephen leave in the film. We don't know why. 
the waltz from the Rosen Cavalier, Richard Strauss. It was something in his mind, in Kubrick's mind. We don't know why he wanted it. It's the one thing he stipulated. It should be that melody from Richard Strauss in some area. So very difficult for me to find a place where it fit. But there's a section for about 30 seconds where they drive through those great faces, you know, across the bridge into Rue City, where on top of my own music, I threaded the waltz theme from Rosen Cavalier as, a, as an homage to Kubrick completely without fully realizing what the connection in his mind was. So it's a very eclectic score and a very voluminous score, very different from the things that Stephen and I have done before, with the possible exception maybe of Close Encounters. I think it's closer to that in its timbral uh, aspect. There are several melodies which are, I would call them cantilena almost. The most prominent one is the one that's played at the end. And I wrote half a dozen of these examples, not fully extended, and played them for Stephen. We kept working on the last scene, the death of the mother. And I would play these themes on the piano, and we would lay them against the film. And the one that we finally used seemed to both of us to be the right expression. It's very simple, although it has its complexities. And it's also very direct. And that scene is about seven minutes long. So it's a long stretch of material for a cantilena of that particular type. <laughs> If it works, it's the result of, of our being able to make some kind of emotional connection with associations of lullaby, of a connection between a child and a mother. It seemed like the right solution. I think the thing that's unique about AI, for me at least, is the essential spiritual aspects of what it was examining. I propose that we build a robot can love. The idea that to be able to love someone is the thing that defines humanity in, in the end. At the end of the film, when David, who's been looking for his mother and wanting to be human all these centuries now, when his mother has her final biological death, he is able to die at the end of the film. And thereby achieving his humanity. By being able to die, he's proven himself to be human, which is the one thing that we all share, we all eventually will do. So these are subjects that are abstract and spiritual and very uh, personal. And they go right to where music can speak to. Music is really about this kind of thing at its core. Not every film, as great as it can be, if it's an adventure film, it may be about hunting sharks, you know. Uh, and in, in emotional musical terms, that may be about heroism or it may be about fear. There is no substitute for your own child! But this film is about very wonderful things to conjure and to ruminate on. But outside, he just looks so real, like he is a child. As a consequence of that unique set of subjects, musically, it made it a special opportunity and challenge for me. There we go. Yeah, I do love to uh, hear from the composer themselves about their uh, thought processes and, and the experience of working on these projects. So I was really pleased to find that uh, interview or uh, yeah, uh, behind the scenes look there. Um, and that piano theme that you hear there at the end, uh, the reunion cue, it's just so achingly beautiful. I really love that and I very nearly um, used that as the cue that I was going to do today but um, that's even longer than this one so um, we would have no hope of making much progress through it. 
Um, let's just quickly turn back on the no input sound so you can hear what we're doing. Actually, find it quite useful to have that sound on myself because um, I have a certain expectation of the notes I'm expecting to hear and then if I don't I know I've most likely misread something or hit the wrong key um, so you're always listening always listening and adjusting where necessary uh, so we've got that in and harp one another one of these one octave glissandos uh, seven again don't need that in to a nice heavy breath that ring. Um, like that. And what else do we need? Harp 2 is doing this. Oops. We want Lacey Vib on those and these. Let's just do that. Oops. Um, So this has actually got a bracket on it like this, which basically means um, it's not arpeggiated. It should be played at the same time. Um, then that's fine. Delta violins. What do I think of the movie? I actually um, really enjoy it, but I've not seen it for quite a while now. Um, Didn't, didn't ever really struggle with the pacing. I'm, I've got no issues with a slow film as long as it's actually saying something or doing something. Um, that's interesting. Why is that? No, that's fine. So accenting the offbeat there and the bass is lending some weight to that as well. So we don't really need a reminder in there, we put a, a marker before that said sempre pizzicato, so always pizzicato. Otherwise we might put a piz in uh, parentheses or brackets. Um, 
second violins we've got um, Should bring us up to there, which brings us into the new um, section. So that's a good place to do a quick playback check. Some interesting tonality in there. I think with the um, mechanical playback, it's uh, a little bit too strict. Um, can adjust that, but uh, sometimes it, um, it doesn't do it hugely well. Maybe I'll try it on that. Uh, I'll do it that way. Small amount of rubato. See what happens when we do playback next time. Right, so uh, we come to the 6 8, and here um, we haven't had any flute or anything in yet, so I am going to add in alto. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm just going to change it. Alto flute. Yes. Can do more than one stays. Right, change plan. I think it has, um, I don't know, maybe there's a kind of algorithmic sound to that um, tonality. Um, something mathematical about it here you know, that um, maybe suggests the whole artificial in intelligence thing. Maybe I'm uh, way off base there. Yeah, so, right, okay, uh, I'm on the wrong page. 
or something has gone awry. Yeah, I think I'm a bit too. Yes, came in too early. There we go. Uh, so, a new theme. together. So all three flutes playing the same. Um, I think, let's take that, put it into horn for a second. Um, yes, pitches match up. So um, the other thing we want to put in there actually is, so um, let's do MF it's a bit weird like that. I need to change my spacing or kerning slightly on that. That's, that's too much for my liking. Um, but the other is too narrow, never mind. Um, yeah, so what I want is MF to MP warmly. Legato tongues technique rather than expression. So um, got uh, bass clarinet so let's bring that out um, we've actually got um, so clarinet 2 has gone to bass clarinet clarinet 3 has gone to E flat contra clarinet contra bass clarinet so I'm going to add some staves in here So E flat bass clarinet is actually also known as contra alto clarinet, um, which is what I normally label it as. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do instrument change like that. So I can label that clarinet one, two, three. Hide that stuff. And then back here where we had clarinet, I'm going to put uh, the three hasn't done anything up to that point, so eventually that will become a hidden stave. So here we just need a note that says. Um, two to base connect like that. Um, instrument change texts. There we go. Right, so our uh, base clarinet is on C. And I think that's not because I'm. In on a 
transposing school, so we're in triple clef. So even though we're playing a bass instrument and a contrabass or contralto instrument here, they are in treble clef um, when they're transposing on the score and in the part, obviously. Regardless of whether you've got a concert score or transposing score, the part will always be transposing for transposing instruments. So they should be notated in treble clef. Uh, sounding an octave or two below um, yeah, we've got synth one has changed to harp sound because it was on synth piano before if you remember so I'm going to put in harp Hi Bernard, very good to see you. Been a little while. Transpose conductor scores for all. <laughs> it makes a big difference for vertical spacing, it really does. But for study, um, I do find that uh, scores in C are a little easier um, to figure out who's doubling who and what harmonies are. Which is uh, the general consensus when I've polled um, customers in the past. So, like so. Uh, to last. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for dropping in Bernard, I'll, I'll um, catch you soon, we'll have to catch up, especially if you're over in London any time this summer. We've got hairpins there, but we've got no starting dynamic. So I'm going to have a quick look on the part, see what we were at before, which is mezzo piano. I'm just going to put in an MP there. Just helpful to know what you're actually starting from. Uh, on a new page, if you've got hairpins like that, you've not been playing continuously. Yeah, great. Catch you soon. Um, now, harp two is doing. That. Interestingly, that is uh, doubled with a tails up, tails down on the G there, like that. I think what I would probably just do is put a little accent. Um, I mean, that doesn't quite mean the same thing. But um, yeah, I think that'd be okay. Looks a little neater. Um, same there, obviously, but not on there. Violins. Do 
on that. And uh, bum, bum, bum. Viola's getting in on the tremolo action. That. And then cellos match harp. No mention of accents there though, so we'll take those out. that. So a quick listen to that page. Yeah, so maybe what I would do there is just uh, amend the dynamics slightly. Um, and what am I looking for? Reset. Just see if that has any effect. Okay, so our mixer was obviously slightly out of balance. Now, uh, Note Performer has preset um, settings for each of the instruments so that they should be balanced if your mixer is flat across the board. Um, so there's that plug in there just to reset the mixer to flat. Um, that sounded a bit better on balance with the tune coming over the top. So let's go. lovely kind of husky tone of the flute in G, the alto flute. Um, three flutes all together there, English horn as well, aka Coranglé. Um, bass clarinet still on A. So, yeah, there's a good example. I mean, these look as though notationally they're on the same notes. Um, or almost. But in fact, because of the tuning, we've got contra alto in E flat and bass clarinet in B flat. So these pitches, whilst they look the same, are actually a fifth apart. Um, So it's still horn one, that's all good. Might just put a reminder in there. Um, so synth two, synth, sorry, one, which is the harp one. Um, 
Then actual harps, we've got there. Um, rest, then like that. Just adjust that a bit. We'll change the arc, not arc, the slope of that um, when we are actually laying out this cue properly. Um, I don't need to do it just yet. And it's uh, LV on all of those, but I'll just put one at the end that implies it. I think. Um, piano, that's good. Da -da -da -da. still carries over into the cello, so I'll just quickly copy that down there while I've got it. Um, let's quickly dot in the bases while we're there too. about the tremolos. Hi Donny, good to see you. What's this? Oh no. I don't know Bill Russell but I certainly know Nichelle Nichols. Unfortunately, we're kind of getting to a point where a lot of stars from that era, um, music and movies and all sorts of media, are reaching that kind of age. It just seems like people are falling left, right and centre. We had uh, David Warner um, last week. Shall we have another listen and see what we've got? Ah, 
so actually, let's just put a quick thing in here. Maybe we put it in here to see. Both of them. Put that like that. Let's see what we've got. Can probably take the tremolos down a touch, don't you? Or I'll leave them there for now. It's not sounding too bad. A couple of weird bits, but check them against the audio I shall. Um, what else have we got here? Um, do I think of while well, that was playing? Oh, yeah, right. So, uh, from there. Okay, so what we've we got here, we've got those guys changing back to standard uh, flutes, concert flutes, and we want bass clarinet in there. It's going to go staccato. is going to hand off to pursue one. More intriguing pictures. <laughs> um, now we've got these guys. Synth one is back to synth piano, so piano. Make that 
there. an interesting looking line. I think we might solo that in a second and just have a listen. Very, uh, very interesting tonality in this. Bum, bum, bum. Then we've got harp, one which is doing the same as that. We don't need that, we don't need that. Finishing off their trim. bit of cello. So what we have there is time. Ooh, we're not doing too bad. We've done 12 pages in uh, yeah, with 10 minutes ago. That's not too bad. With a lot of natter in between. Uh, bass clinics still there. So hide that. Staccato. Hand off to pursues. Two joins in there and contra there. So we 
get that. staff in above vibraphone because I want that to be orchestral bells. It's kind of a cockroach barely sound. That's fun. So the sample sound for um, note performers um, Glock doesn't go above A, I think. Yeah, so the A sharp there it thinks is out of range. But in fact, um, in the Emil Richards collection, there is a xylophone that goes up higher. I forget how much higher, but I can look it up. Uh, a uh, <coughs> um, this came up before um, about range. Yeah, so that goes up, in fact, to an E, much bigger range, goes up to E8. So it's quite possible that, um, because this uh, particular collection gets used a lot by um, Hollywood composers, uh, they would know that they have that instrument available to them with that wider range. But unfortunately, we've got an A flat there that's not A sharp. Sorry, that's not going to sound uh, on playback. Excuse me. Then we've got a synth piano, which is on. So that's going to look nicer on there. Let's put that down there. Synth to Celest. Same figure as before. Mix the piano. Really? Um, some nice piano chords. Let's put those in. We've got. Um, non arpeggio. So let's get two. that because our um, left hand is coming up to that staff 
and we need uh, and maybe why is that pretty sharp there? Interesting. It's a nice fruity gourd. So it's arpeggiated. Uh, oops, there. And then this is non arpeggio. So I'm going to put non arpeggio. Um, all of it. Is allowed to ring. Magico. Um, pedal. We've got in a thing already to fix pedaling, so we're doing that. Have a feeling we might have an errant sharp on the B there. Um, we'll just have a quick try with it as it's written in the manuscript. Um, oh, nice. That'd be fun to have a listen to, Donny. Are you um, transcribing it by ear? In as voice three, I think. Yeah. Then a voice one, hopefully, we do. That's fun. Nice. Um, no dynamic marking, so I'm going to put MP in there because that's what everything around it is playing. We'll see how that lasts. button down there just to make sure the bottom staff picks up the dynamic as well. Should do anyway but just in case. Then we've got um, so we've got our synth in already doing that. We want our harp doing the same but an octave lower. Because of the terrest sound. Um, 
do we want? Harp to doing. I suppose that would sound even better on bass clef, really, wouldn't it? Hmm, interesting. Right now, uh, violas are doing this, which is. Consortino with mute. And now, <laughs> first and seconds get their little um, moment, which looks like. Uh, join in on the fun. Do we need that? Do we need that? Do we need that? That is going to be quite a frustrating place to leave it. Sorry. <laughs> um, sorry in advance because um, it gets where does it turn? Uh, maybe one more bar just to get us over the phrase. Um, what else are the two violas? Beast mode. <laughs> 53 bucks, yeah. So this would be to see flutes here. Flute. Flute. Um, hide. Put that in there as well. Like that. 
that. And this has, you know, picked up the new phrase there. There we go up the octave, um, but I'm not going to put that in. I'm just going to end the previous phrase, so we need uh, that to call flute one. So that's nothing there. This guy is on that. Contras or nothing. That's on G. C below. It's on C. They keep. And we want synth two. Harp, I dare say, that's synth two. Oops, there. Gets that. Harp does indeed get that. Piano gets. Boom, boom. Let's just put that in. Uh, what have we got? That again. Followed by That uh, da, 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 da. that's fine. Like that. And that ends the phrase, so that was worth quickly dotting in. Let's have a listen to what we've got. Then uh, what I'll do is, as usual, sign out with uh, the actual recording playing along with the score. So let's see how Note Performer does with it. There's something a little Harry Pottery about that. It sounds um, 
Mm, what is it? Maybe Dumbledore's office or something in Diagon Alley. You know, it's that kind of quirky, magical sound. Very nice though. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, um, please remember to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, next week we're going to be having a look at John Williams' score again um, from The Patriot. Um, Roland Emmerich movie. Quite an interesting story behind that score because um, John Williams actually came in to replace uh, David Arnold on that project. You know, David Arnold and Roland Emmerich having worked together on Stargate and Independence Day and Godzilla in fact before. So uh, you know, a long-running partnership but uh, put aside with the opportunity to um, work with John Williams um, and I know that um, I think David has said that uh, in the same situation uh, he would probably do the same <laughs> so uh, is isn't doesn't feel like it was too personal a decision um, but uh, yeah the Patriot uh, being our final step on the way to our next patron's pick, which is The Little Mermaid. So uh, this week, linking via John Williams to The Patriot, and then uh, the actor René Aubergenois, um, who plays the priest in The Patriot, is our link to The Little Mermaid, where he plays the voice of the chef. Um, so that'll be fun and then uh, it'll be interesting to see what our next target score is um, for our next patron so if you're interested in getting in on that action as well um, we've been having a look at behind the scenes of uh, my next book um, Legends of the Fall over on Patreon um, and uh, that's nearing completion I'm just finishing editing the final queue now so um, that will be ready to go to print in short order, uh, certainly in early August. But uh, look out for that on social media. It'll be everywhere when it's available to order. Don't worry, I'll make sure you know. But for now, um, let's bring up the... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? PDF of the score. Because we can just see it slightly bigger on the screen. We'll uh, hide my mug and uh, you can have a listen to the original audio to play you out. So thank you very much for joining and uh, hopefully I'll see you again next time. Ciao for now. Try that screen. That'll be better, won't it? See you later. Bye. Thank you.